our first project will be to shrink wrap a boat. And we've chosen a 19 footer here. And all the same principles that work on this 19 footer will work on larger and smaller boats. What Ryan has done already is put in the center support, which runs from the highest point on the bow to the highest point on the stern. What this does is uh, give you the strength and slope that you need uh, to have snow and uh, ice, water, whatever, run off the cover. Okay, Ryan is now going to put a buckle in, going side to side on the boat over the top of the support pole. As you can see, uh, uh, we have two uprights in this particular boat. And generally speaking, you want to be about 10 inches higher behind the windshield on a boat with your upright support than where the strap normally falls right on the top of the windshield. This will give us the slope so that snow and ice uh, will run right off the cover. So we have a tight center support and now Ryan is also pulling the uh, side to side support nice and tight so that will give us plenty of support so there will be no weight resting on the windshield. He's going to do this one right behind the windshield and we'll do the one in the aft part of the cockpit also. Uh, buckles can absorb heat quicker than the shrink wrap, so we like to put some tape on them so that uh, the buckles won't protrude through when the uh, shrink wrap is hot. And on the top of the support pole, we're also going to put in another staple to hold the uh, pole upright. All right, Ryan's going back to put a buckle in the uh, strapping going uh, side to side over the last pole in the boat in the back of the cockpit. Uh, the, again, the buckles allow you to adjust the tension in the strapping and the tighter the upright support structure is, the better. Uh, we don't want any movement where snow or ice could sit on the cover. Even our thinnest shrink wrap will hold 256 pounds per square foot, which if it's laying inside of a uh, boat cover, it can cause some damage. So the support structure is very, very important. Uh, Ryan is, of course, putting a, uh, a loop on each side of the buckle just in case uh, it should turn. This gives it a little bit of extra durability. Then he'll trim off the edges, tape it, and this will. Uh, and after he staples the top of the pole through the top of the uh, end cap, this will constitute the uh, finish of the support structure. And once that is done, uh, you just want to make sure you have all of your uh, tools taken with you off from the boat. And also uh, at that point in time, uh, make sure of course that your boat has been winterized. This is a very good time for we actually start putting the uh, shrink wrap on. All right, uh, we, again we have the support structure done. And what we have to do to measure how wide the material should be for your boat uh, is to, uh, you, you always want to be six to eight inches below the rub rail on the boat. So what we're going to do to determine the width of the material is measure from the highest board at the center over the widest part of the boat down to six or eight inches below. We have about uh, 66 inches and we want to double that figure and our band is going to go right about here, our perimeter band, and we need another foot, six inches on each side that we're going to tuck under the band. So we're going to have uh, about a 12 foot piece of material here will work very well. Now the perimeter band goes around the hull horizontally and again this is going to be very tight and this is what's going to hold the cover on. To hold this band up though the first thing we're going to do is tie some loops in the uh, actual coming down from uh, stanchion bases or uh, grab rail in this particular instance using the same strapping. Now this uh, is just a very simple loop that we're going to run the perimeter band through and this will give us a nice straight line along the side of the boat also. And Ryan will now start uh, running this through and we're going around the entire boat from the stern around the bow and back to the stern again where we will put a buckle in and tighten it with a tensioning tool. Ryan's coming around now with the perimeter band. Again it's went around the entire boat and we want to put a buckle in at the stern where we get an equal pull down both sides of the boat. And the buckle is installed in the uh, strapping so that we can put a tensioning tool on it. And again, we, we want this band to be extremely tight. This is the band that's holding the entire cover on. If it's loose at all, it can chafe 
and uh, move up and down on the side of the boat, which isn't good during the winter storage season, uh, causing scratches in the gel coat or paint. Also, if this band is loose at all, if snow is sitting on top of the cover, it can pull the band up, allowing the snow to fall into the cover. And again, the shrink wrap is strong enough to uh, cause damage on uh, some boats if it uh, did happen to fall on the inside of the boat. So Ryan's putting the tensioning tool on right now, and it uh, easily uh, slips onto the uh, strapping. And you can put the strapping through any of the uh, slots in the capstan, and he's starting to pull it tight. And we want to again make this just really, really tight. The strapping itself is a woven polyester cord, and uh, it will stretch only about one or two percent just before it gets to its maximum break strength. So we're continuing to pull out. Then Ryan will go down and feel on the side of the boat to make sure it's tight enough before he cuts the strapping off. Ryan's now checking the tension in the side of the uh, perimeter band. Again, we want this extremely tight. He'll also uh, cover the fuel vent at this time. This is very important that the fuel vent be covered so no fumes are escaping. Uh, a, a simple piece of tape over the fuel vent will uh, make that happen. Now the fuel vent will probably be covered by the shrink wrap, so what Ryan is going to do is put a piece of tape below where the cover is going to go on the side of the boat so we can come back and remember where the fuel vent was, because we do want to open it up again before the, uh, uh, af after we actually have the um, cover on the boat. All of our rolls of shrink wrap are center slit material, so that means they have an opening in them. They're multifold, so if you order a 40 foot wide roll of material, it's not going to be 40 foot wide as it comes to you. You'll have multiple folds in it, and all of the material actually has a slit down the center. So as you put it on the, the object you're going to cover, it doesn't matter if it's a machine, boat, whatever, it will unfold equally in each direction, so it's, uh, it, it's very easy to apply. And it has a bit of slip in it also, so it unfolds easily. Also, the uh, rolls of shrink wrap all come on a uh, three-inch cardboard core, so it's very easy to uh, run a pipe through like on our uh, film dispenser. And uh, the film should be always off the ground. It has a lot of static electricity in it, which means that it's going to pick up dirt, gravel, and so on, and you do not want to drag that up and over a uh, boat uh, or machinery, because then you're getting... Uh, uh, dirt on it which can cause abrasion and scratches. So we're ready now. We have our tight perimeter band. The support structure is done. The fuel vent is uh, covered and we're ready for Ryan to start putting the film on. You already knows when you open a box of shrink wrap and you can almost always hear the wind start to pick up. So we want to have it all folded up and again that's another good reason to have the uh, perimeter band tight because now when we have the film on and we unfold it at the first time, uh, we want to be able to tuck it and have the perimeter band actually hold the material underneath it. Now, as, we putting, or as we're putting the film on, we want to have an extra six inches at the bow below the perimeter band and same thing at the stern. Ryan's cutting the film, making sure he has enough to go over the lower unit. Next step is going to be to unfold it, and again, this is a center slit material that unfolds equally from the center to each side. And you can see how easily it does unfold, and I was draping nicely. Uh-oh, I crossed it on the boat. Once Ryan has it unfolded, he's going to tuck a little bit at the bow and at the stern and on along by the, uh, near the windshield also, just to make sure that it holds on. And we really don't need that much to uh, extra below the perimeter band to tuck under. You always want to make sure that the center of the material is on the center of the boat because it's disheartening when you cut off some when you're already short. The 
find a couple of pleats up near the bow, and then the next pleat will be near the windshield, and then we'll have one at the transom corners also. Just tucking enough right now to hold the material on. Again, this is where a tight perimeter band is uh, necessary to make sure that the film does stay on until we have a chance to heat weld it with the heat tool. Even as it's getting tucked under the perimeter band, you can see it's beginning to look like a boat cover already. And you can see the nice slope that we have with our support structure. Ryan's finishing tucking along the sides and working towards the bow. And once we get to the bow, we have a, a special way of cutting out the excess material so that uh, you get a much neater and uh, more durable type of bow. And now, and Ryan just went by the windshield, and you can see that there's a, always a pleat near the uh, side of the windshield on, on all boats. And we just like to put the pleat towards the stern just as a standard type of uh, operation in case the boat will be towed anywhere. And uh, on this particular boat, we don't really have much of a, uh, a pleat as we get towards the bow. On some boats, you'll find that uh, there is a pleat. Now at the bow, there is always excess material. A lot of people just fold it over and try and heat weld it all together. But as you can see, the easiest way is to cut out the excess. So Ryan just moved the film out a few inches f forward of the bow, followed the shape of the bow down, and now he just can tuck it in either direction, overlap it and tuck it. Ryan has the uh, entire uh, cover tucked under the perimeter band around the boat. Now it's time to use the heat tool to make a heat weld. So we're actually putting a hem in the cover where uh, he'll run the heat tool in a horizontal fashion, the uh, flame itself, right above the perimeter band. And uh, he's using the back of his hand to uh, pat the material, and that fuses the pieces together so the perimeter band is actually sealed into the base of the cover. You only need a couple inches of uh, heat wall to actually make it work well. Now, as you come to a pleat, you want to do the pleats at the same time as you're going around the boat, so when you're done going around, you're ready to, to begin shrinking the cover. So same thing, you shoot heat into the pleats, pat it shut with the, the back of your hand, making sure that you're wearing your glove. Again, the heat will be horizontal, just above the perimeter band. This is a beautiful use of the shrink wrap, or the shrink fast heat tool. And it goes very quickly. This is why you only want a couple or three or four inches of material tucked in above the perimeter band. Brian's finishing up now. Both sides of the boat have been uh, shrink or heat welded around the perimeter band. So he's going back to the transom and uh, folding the film under and actually holding it up to uh, get a good heat weld. And he'll also be protecting the lower unit at the same time. He's almost done on the uh, stern of the boat. And once we are done at the stern, we have one more major step to do before we can shrink the entire cover. So the hub area on the lower unit will be covered at the uh, and protected now using uh, uh, the, the actual shrink wrap that is 
making the uh, initial cover. The line is actually reaching up and holding the material around the band and heat welding. And then as it comes to the lower unit, they'll fold it over and uh, just tuck it basically to protect it and keep water from getting into the hub. Almost complete. The last step before we can actually shrink the entire cover is to put belly bands on. And the belly bands go from the perimeter band on the uh, side of the boat down under the boat if there's nothing to tie to, or in this case we can tie them to the trailer. And no matter how tight we have our perimeter band, when we put the heat to it with the heat gun and actually start shrinking the cover, it has a natural tendency to pull the perimeter band up and then we don't get the shrink out of the wrap itself, it's just from pulling the band up. So the uh, belly bands are installed to hold the perimeter band where it initially was. We don't want to pull it too tight, but we want to keep the perimeter band in the same general area of where it was. And on a uh, power boat, we generally need about uh, a belly band every six to eight feet. Now on this boat, we're going to put one right by the windshield and also uh, closer to the back of the boat. Now, we don't need anything in front of the windshield just because of the shape of the hull will hold the perimeter band down. On sailboats, you need more uh, belly bands only because of the shape of the hull. It doesn't uh, afford the perimeter band anything to attach to, so it has more of a tendency to rise. And this is the only time you actually have to use a, uh, a jackknife or a regular bladed knife that's exposed to cut in a horizontal fashion right above the perimeter band. Uh, remember, again, to cut horizontally, you never want to cut the perimeter band. That's very unrewarding. And the uh, belly bands don't have to be extremely tight. Again, just taut enough to hold the perimeter band uh, right where it was when we initially uh, installed it. And once these bands are on, we can uh, start the shrinking process. Ryan's tucking the end, and we're all set. Now we have the belly bands on, and uh, Ryan is starting at the stern. And we're going to start and shrink from the perimeter band, and we're going to pick a section on the boat. And the section is right to the uh, top of the uh, cockpit area. And what we're going to do is shrink from the base. You always want to shrink from the bottom. Let the heat work for you. So Ryan is starting at the bottom, and he's going to shrink up and to the uh, top of the uh, combing on the boat. And what that is going to do is start pulling the excess plastic out of the top. You can see it shrinks very quickly. And especially because we're starting at the bottom and letting the heat rise. Now he's going to stop right here and before he gets to the top. And we're going to go around the entire boat up that far. So it's going to pull out excess. And we'll start to tighten the boat very nicely. And we won't have to shrink the top as much. And you want to always wear your glove again at the same time because you'll be padding the seams and uh, making sure that everything is holding together nicely as you go around the boat. You see Ryan is hitting the film nicely. It's very similar to spray painting where you're applying heat in the same kind of fashion. You get the material to start shrinking, and where it's not shrunk, you'll see wrinkles form. So it gives you a clue as to what you've hit and what you've missed. And same thing around the bow. Now we'll do this around the entire boat, and then come back and we'll put an extension on the heat tool and shrink the top. And we'll do that in sections and, uh, and the same principles on uh, using shrinking this boat will work on larger boats also. Ryan has went all the way around the boat up uh, to the uh, edge of the uh, combing and so on and now we can do the top. And you can see the center support strap and where we've also put in the wooden uprights. And you want to actually shrink it section by section if you have the opportunity. 
and that, that's what Ryan is doing right now. So the shrink wrap will actually stop shrinking at the strapping uh, going down the center and, uh, and across the unit. Uh, the cover is all shrunk. Ryan is going back right now to uh, remove the uh, tape over the fuel vent so the so it can breathe through the uh, storage season. He ripped off the small piece of tape that uh, marked where the vent is. Now he's just cutting a small hole to uh, to have access to the uh, fuel vent. Once he has that open, he can pull the tape off. And then we're going to put a vent over it so that it can breathe properly. And we're going to use one of our DS683 self-adhesive vents. So Ryan's peeling the backing off of the, uh, the vent so the adhesive is exposed, putting it over the hole. Reaching inside to make sure that uh, there's good adhesion between the shrink wrap and the adhesive on the vent. And it's simply a matter of putting the cap on. And now the vent can breathe during the storage season. One of the last steps after the cover is uh, actually shrunk is to install the door. And doors are put on uh, with tape around the perimeter. And they should be put in on a surface that uh, is not entirely flat. We want a little bit of slope so that uh, they don't have a, a, a lot of weight resting on them. The door should look like a great big U as you're facing it with the bottom of the U facing down towards the uh, uh, bottom of the bolt where you're going to have access. Then simply uh, tape around the perimeter of the unit, press the tape down completely to eliminate any air bubbles or loose edges. And then uh, after, it, after it's taped, we can cut out the center of the, uh, the door and have access. And Ryan's using a film cutting knife, which works well for cutting the tape also in a nice, neat fashion. So you have a clean end, which will stick well. Doors do not have to be heated in, and uh, that you should not put heat onto the doors because it can deform them where they will not open and close. Again, rub the tape down good so that you have good adhesion. Now we can just unzip the door using the film knife, cut out the center, and you can have access. Once it's trimmed out, Ryan can just close the door, zip it shut, and your cover is secure again, but you still have access. Ryan is also taping the seams and pleats just so that they don't come open. Uh, occasionally, uh, there's not enough heat put in to make a good heat weld, so they uh, will come open after a few days of sitting, but a, a, a simple strip of tape will uh, keep them closed for the entire storage season. And the last step is to ventilate the cover. And we're going to use uh, more of the 683 vents. And we want enough vents in the cover to have cross-flow ventilation. So on a boat this size, this 19-foot boat, I would put in four vents. It never hurts to over-ventilate. You want to have as much airflow as possible to keep moisture down. And uh, so your boat will be uh, dry and fresh when you open it up again. And also the, uh, the vents travel down the road good. So if this boat is going to be, uh, or machine would be uh, transported, you can still use the same vents.
And we have a completed cover. Thanks for following along with us today while we installed a uh, professional and durable shrink wrap cover. As you can see, it's fully ventilated. We have a support structure so you'll have no problem with snow, ice, rain sitting on the cover during the storage or transportation season or while you're using it. And uh, the final thing is, uh, what do you do with the cover when you take it off? Well, we have a recycling program that works coast to coast in the United States, also in Canada. It's called the rebag system, where you actually just cut the cover off above the perimeter band, stuff it in a bag, UPS will pick it up at your location so it doesn't have to go into a landfill. This is a